Good day everyone. I am Joseph of Digilitic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm. In this lesson, we will talk about probability and distributions. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify discrete probability and distributions present discrete probability and distributions and relate discrete probability and distributions to machine learning. So in our last session, we talked about random variables and independent events. We were able to map measurable function and its values. We were able to learn about the probability measures of a fair die and not fair die. So with this, we were able to appreciate how it is connected to our real life. Okay, so in understanding probability and distribution, the idea should be viewed this way. Associated to each possible value x of a discrete a random variable x, is the probability px will take the value x in one trial of the experiment. Sound complex, doesn't it? So let's make it simple. The big x here stands for the random variable and the small x are the possible values. So it is like the big x is the main set and the small axes here are the elements of the subset. So for better understanding, let's make a drawing. So we have a big X and then the small X. So we said that the big X here is actually the random variable. And again, because it's a random variable, it can take many possible values. And these possible values are the first X, second X, third x and the fourth x. So each x here has its own probability measure or value. So this is the big x and the subset or the small circle represents the small axis. So outside the small x are also other values okay but only that they belong to one group that belong to the big x so for better understanding let's relate this to real life situations so for example you love fruits and you love apples mangoes grapes and bananas the big the big x here represents the fruits okay and then the first small x here is an apple for example the second one here is mango. The third one here is grape. And last one here is banana. Okay, so for, for, for so many fruits in the world, these are the four fruits that you love. So they belong to one set. And other fruits can be here, but only that you don't love them that much in comparison to these four fruits. Okay? Do you have any question? So, in understanding um, probability, we are going to think that there are two important rules that govern it. So the first one is that probabilities must be greater than or equal to zero. So the probability must be greater than or equal to zero. So it's just like this, it could be greater than or equal to zero. The probability could be greater than or equal to zero. Then the second rule is that the sum of the probabilities of each possible outcome must be equal to one. So just a while ago, we said it, it must be 
greater than or equal to zero and then this time if you're going to sum up all the probabilities then the total value would be one so for example here if this one has a value all of them has value so if you're going to total them then the total should be one so for them to total one for example let's have this is 0 0.25 this is 0 0.25 0 0.25 then this is 0 0.25 so if you're going to total them this they make one so that's it that's how it is so in our future lessons we will learn that this is intertwined with the concepts of the area under the curve for statistics and definite integral for calculus so but as of the moment let's not bother our petty heads over that Let's just take it as a value from 0 to 1. Anyway, um, in our future lessons, we will be understanding more about integral calculus or definite integral and then statistics, the area under the curve, which is really very important. Okay, so let's consider again a coin and a die. So for a coin, we learned this one in our past lesson. So we said that P is equal to y our p probability of y which is equal to 1 plus the p y equal to 0 which is equal to 1 then we have p for a die p equal to y which is equal to 1 plus p y equal to 2 plus and so on and so forth until p y equals to 6 and then the sum of their probabilities uh, again is equal to one so maybe you are wondering about what they mean or what they stand for so we have here one zero one two six five four and three so in the case of the coin one here is for the head and zero is for the tail so if you're conducting your own research or your own experiment you can actually use the other way around however just for the sake of our example in our study let's have let's have one for head and tail or zero for tail for for consistency so in the case of the die the numbers are the ones that appear on the face of the respective sides so in lesson two we discussed more about it the link is given below for you to study the lesson so to put the statements in their mathematical equivalents so these ones so just a while ago we had the statements or the two rules so the they can actually be translated into mathematical terms or mathematical concepts or statements so and these are the interval of a zero and one or we could say zero is less than or equal to p y equals to y which is less than or equal to one or in some case this is written as like this so instead of y equals to y this becomes x okay then we have the summation of p or probability probability p of y which is equal to y and then equal to one so again it means this the summations of all their probabilities is equal to one Okay, so in some sense, uh, in other cases, this is written as this, but the, the actual the same mean, the, uh, they have the same meaning, they mean the same thing. So it means this one, that the value is from 0 to 1, and it means that all probabilities of all outcomes must be equal to 1. So for better understanding of a statement, let's talk about some of the parts of the statements. So the lowercase y, this one, is the values that a random variable y, the big Y, can take. The summation y is the sum overall of the possible values that can be taken by a random variable y. The p y equals y is the probability that the random variable y has an outcome y so after talking these two statements 
maybe you're asking yourself about these two equations what these two equations are for so we can use these two equations to define probabilities based on our basic assumptions so if you could remember in our lesson 1 and lesson 2 we have these assumptions or assumption that says that if the outcomes have the same probabilities or chance of happening then they have the same probability measure so as to the coin for example we said that the two outcomes are equally likely so we could say that PY is equal to 1 which is equal to PY equal to 0 so remember here that the 1 here represents the head and 0 represents the tail so which is equal to R R here is 1 the random variable which is 1 so that means if you're going to add this measure and this measure then we could arrive at 1 so we have here 2R, two, R. two R's because here is one half and then here is one half so they have the same prob probability measure so we're going to multiply that by 2 because we have here two values then that is equal to 1 so again the value here is one half and the value here is one half so 2 times one half 2 over 2 or equal to 1 so here we can see the prob probability is one half for each value then take note that this is a uni uniform and, disc and discrete probability so let's make things more interesting let's have a problem our problem here is a fair coin is tossed twice let x be the number of head that are observed then number one construct the probability distribution of x and then find the probability that at least one head is observed so again let me read this one again construct construct the probability distribution of x and then find the probability that at least one head is observed at least one head is observed so we could have one we could have two but never zero so how to do that so before going to the solution let's define a distribution of a random variable so that we have an idea about what a probability distribution is so a probability distribution of a discrete random variable x is a list of each possible value of x together with the probability that x takes the value in one trial event so for better understanding of this definition let's go to the solution to the problem so let's have this one step by step so our first step is that we're going to identify the possible values that x can take using the Cartesian product. So still remember the, the Cartesian product, so we had that in our lesson 2. So we discussed again that in our lesson 2. So this is the Cartesian product. So based on this, we have four possible outcomes, which are t and t, or tail and tail, tail and head, head and tail, head and head. So examining the Cartesian product, we can arrive at this sample space. So these are our sample space. So x is equal to 0 for tail and tail. Why 0? It's because we don't have head here. Remember that our problem is that we're looking for at least one head. But because there is no head here, then x here is equal to 0. Okay, so x is equal to 1, 2, head and tail, tail and head, here. Okay, so we have found here at least one head. So two outcomes have one, have at least one head. So for number 3, which is x is equal to 2, so that means we have two heads. So we have one outcome that has two heads okay so okay this time we're going to count the corresponding value of x to know the probability of each of these events so again we have here four four outcomes and each of these outcome has the same probability measure so remember that 
if we're going to add one or all of them the the total sum is equal to one and then since each of them has the same chance of happening and which means they have the same prob probability measure of value then we're going to divide this by four so which is equal to point twenty five okay so this is illustrated in this table so let, let's have this table so for zero because there is only one outcome having no head then that is 0 0.25 so for at least one head there are two outcomes having at least one head then 0 0.25 0 0.25 times 2 then that is 0 0.50 and then for an outcome having at, at least having two heads there is a, there is one so we have 0 0.25 times 1 and then the answer is 0.25 okay then the third step is that we're going to illustrate the mathematical equivalent that at least one head is the event x x which is equal to or greater than 1 so equal to or greater than 1 so we we have this 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 one and then then we have this one so one head and then two heads so we are not concerned with this one because we haven't found any head so they are tail so th this is disregarded so our main concern is to look for the outcome that has at least one head so the probability of measure or the prob probability function having one head plus the probability function having two heads so this is the, the measure the value is 0 0.50 as shown here and then 0 0.25 as shown here so therefore the probability measure of x having equal or greater than one head is 0 0.75 so um, before I forget let me say that both of them they are mutually exclusive okay they are mutually exclusive but then it's because they have the same number of heads so we just uh, unite them or add them together okay so down to our last step so we have here constructed a histogram just to illustrate the prob probability distribution so this histogram here describes a list of each possible probability value of x in one trial so you can see here the corresponding value of zero head which is 0 0.25 1 which is 0 0.50 then 2 here is 0 0.25 so that's it maybe you are asking what this concept is for probability distributions are prevalent in many sectors like insurance physics engineering computer science and social sciences it has an easy application and prevalent uses while probability provides theoretical concepts distributions help us to visualize data after all being said and done I'd like you to do this a pair of fair die is rolled let x denote the sum of the number of dots on the top faces so construct the probability distributions of x for a pair of fair die then find the probability of x which is equal to or greater than 11 and find the probability of x that takes an odd value do not forget to subscribe like and share Click the bell icon to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.